I'm here with Aaron, yeah. aka Zara. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Very good, thank you. How about you? I'm good. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. Like, I'm enjoying as well. Like, um, for those of you that obviously are listening to this and not looking at the visuals, um, Aaron is currently on his lunch break, so I'm getting a tour <laughs> of what I presume is London. Yeah, I'm actually walking down Brick Lane right now. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah hang on, there you go. It's nice and bustling, as you can see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sun's out. It's all good. So for the people out there that maybe haven't heard of you before, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a DJ, producer, uh, and drummer. Uh, part of the, like, Daytime Daytimers Collective as well. So, like, I help run stuff in the internal team. Um, yeah, and I just put out, like, my latest EP, like, last last week. Latest, my debut EP is the only one I've got. <laughs> so, um, I've just, uh, yeah. It's been really good. It's uh, had like a really good response to it, and uh, yeah. So for those that don't know, the EP is called "Practice Makes Miracles," right? Yeah, that's what. Yeah, it's obviously, it's your debut EP. How did it come about, and how did you get to the place that you're like, right, this is what I want to release as my debut um, piece of work? It's been like quite a long time in the making. Like I spent about two years working on it. So I think, as with a lot of things, like you know when we were in lockdown like during covid and stuff like that um we you know many people had a lot of time just to sort of like sit down and maybe just like really go deep into stuff that they may not have had the opportunity to do so um just because there was like more time and um at, at the beginning of 2021 i was like i'm gonna have a crack at like trying to yeah like put out something a bit more substantial than just like because at the time i'd only really done like remixes for people and um, I put out a track with my my friend Mandy as a more collaborative thing, uh, which is more hip hop inspired. But this time I was like, no, I'm gonna try and like, go like go big <laughs> with it. And um, then I was like, yeah, let's let's just try and explore what I can do. Um, and I didn't want the release to be like anything. Like I wanted it to be like different, like people would be like oh that's quite um innovative <laughs> uh maybe not in- innovative because i don't think what i've made is actually innovative in in that respect but i just wanted to go big with it i suppose like just like make a statement and be like this is like like i wanted to make something that was worth people listening to so i did put a lot of effort into it yeah i just wanted to make something a bit grand with like the release and that sort of thing yeah so i s- decided to like make it like a whole like 20 minute piece that you can listen to in one go um which yeah ambitious that's what i was like well, ambitious <laughs> like i wanted it to be quite an ambitious release um so yeah because of that i really took my time making sure that it was like very intricate and I wanted the like visuals around the release to be all very like meaningful and um yeah I just thought long and hard about how I wanted it all to like look and how the visuals like tied into like what the music like meant to me and what I was like going through at the time um so yeah I hope that's like come across when people hear it and like this is and stuff like that you know so given that obviously like you said it's a piece that's meant to be listened to from start to finish for 20 odd minutes what was your reasoning for wanting to put out the tracks as individual as well rather than just putting out one sole piece do you know what i mean i wanted to give like listeners the option basically like you know if you wanted to listen to it one go i've made the whole piece for you one go to listen to but also you know a couple of the tracks are more like club club influenced as well so i did want people to be like you know you can play this in a club too if you'd like to um so that's why i also put out the individual versions of it too um so you know i kind of like i'm really influenced by like but like and, especially uh, with like the in- electronic side of things like stuff that works really well in a club but also you can put your headphones on and like have a really nice immersive intricate experience like listening to it so i wanted to make something that was like the midpoint of that um so that was like another reason that i kind of went i suppose ambitious with it in that respect and yeah so that's why i gave people the option to have like you can listen to it in one go or if you just want to listen to individual tracks like they work just as well standalone too um so yeah i wasn't too sure how well that would have like been executed but i think so far it's been yeah it's been fine (laughs) 
Touching upon your influences behind this project, who would you say the main people or artists are? Yeah, so especially with this, I think, you know, Floating Points is a massive influence on the way that I produce stuff. Um, and then I also got really into, um, like, Suzanne, sorry, Suzanne Chiani, who is like a, like an absolute master at like, um, like modular synthesis, modular synthesis um, especially around like using Booker bo- synthesis. So I kind of attempted to try and make something in that vein. No, it doesn't even come close to like what she can do. But, um, you know, the third track on um, on the EP makes is like really influenced by that space because it's like the more ambient one. And um, when I was making the EP, I was using these uh, like Bukla, um like plugins, which like they emulate the sound of it. So I was learning how to sort of like use them in like software form because like, like yeah, part of the board, like to <laughs> buy actual Bukla modules because they're really expensive. Um, so yeah, that, um, you know, at the time I was also listening to like a lot of Mala. So I think some of that like real deep baseline dubstep stuff comes through. Obviously like, like being South Asian, I'm gonna try and sprinkle in like some of those influences as well. So I think that comes through in like the last track Miracles, like, you know, sampling a lot of like some like older Bollywood stuff in there, but like some of the breaks that are used, like, and some like, other samples and that sort of thing. Um, mm-hmm. So I just went, I think it's just like a real accurate representation of like all the mishmash of stuff that I'm really into. And like, I, I, I don't think I'm very good at making music that like just sticks to one genre. Like, and I think that's why the EP itself just like spans across like everything and anything. Like, I'm not very focused in that respect. Um, so it's just like a complete like yeah mixture of like all the things that I'm like really I was really into at the time and I still am into. Um, so yeah, I think like, those are the things I really were quite inspired sure. inspired by it as well. Oh and oh and James Holden as well. I don't know if you're like familiar with his work, like especially his like earlier stuff, um, like really weird idiosyncratic sort of like electronic stuff that is a bit maybe a bit wild at times, but. Um, yeah, I, like, I really like that kind of stuff too. So thinking yeah. more about the actual um, name behind the project and how it's obviously split mm-hmm. into the individual tracks, Practice Makes Miracles, they're kind of almost the opposite of each other because when I think of miracle, yeah. when I think of miracles, I think of something that's completely unexpected, completely just it's it, it the reason it's a miracle is because you wouldn't have expected it to happen at all it's sort of out of the blue whereas practice mm. obviously reinforces that idea of working continuously at something in order to achieve a desired result um so yeah. what what's the meaning behind that title so it, i guess it kind of tied in with like me ambitiously thinking i could like look out put, put out anything like this in the first place and like also like because i play drums like i spend a lot of time like practicing i don't have drum gear at home um but i do have like a practice pad so i spend quite a lot of time like practicing rudiments and stuff like that um and it just got you know those two things like also also like when i was learning how to use these like booker plugins that i mentioned earlier and um i learned a lot of new production techniques actually when i was making this um ep and it got me thinking like Oh, like practicing stuff is like it's a really boring task and it can be really arduous like no matter what it is uh, like you're doing the same thing over and over again it's very repetitive and you know it's just quite dull and you know it's yeah it's not something that people tend to find much enjoyment in doing it, it usually feels like much more of a chore if anything but one day i remember like i was practicing like my drum rudiments as i mentioned and um I did something that I never thought I could do. Like I just like played something really fast and I was like, wait, hang on a minute. Like, and it seemingly felt like it just came out of the blue. Like uh, all of a sudden I could just do this thing that I never thought I could have done. And I know I suppose it's like common sense to be like, well, obviously if you practice something, like you're going to be able to do it. But it wasn't that aspect of it that really like struck me. It was the fact that how effortless and how spontaneous it felt. And I was like, oh, it kind of felt like miraculous like to me. And then, you know, when I finished up these tracks as well, 
with all these new production techniques I'd learned. I, again, I listened to them and I was just like, I never in my life would have thought I would have been able to make something that sounds like that. Especially like the second track um, on the EP, uh, Practice, is was a real exercise in that because it's just stuff I never thought I would have been able to have done. Um, so that's why I called it that because it's like it was an honest representation of what was going on at the time of my life, especially, you know, being in lockdown and having time to actually practice stuff. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's why I called it that. And, you know, the artwork itself, like, really reflects that too. Like, basically, and the sounds is all, like, juxtaposing, like, murky dullness with, like, shimmering, like, miraculousness <laughs> um, and that sort of thing. Um, I think if you make, like, instrumental electronic music, it can be quite hard to get across, like, what the songs mean to you. Um, so I did, I did the best I could with that sort of thing. Um, because, yeah, as I said, like I'm really into like the electronic side of stuff that works well as like solo listening and club stuff too. But sometimes club stuff like can be more like you know there's a functionality aspect to like club music. Um, but I didn't really want to go down that road. Sort of thing. That was a very long winded answer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, definitely. We we, we yeah, yeah. want to understand the full process behind all of this, and I was going to ask you about the artwork anyway. So you've basically answered two yeah. questions in one. There. I just wanted to know, like, what the link was because I think I've seen through what you've been putting out in terms of the actual um, promo behind the release. A lot of it has also yeah. been centered around the artwork. So I was just curious as to what the link was yeah. between those two it, yeah it pretty much is that like but basically the artwork is actually it's actually a scarf that we have at home it's my partner's scarf like, like her nan um gifted it to her and i think it's i think it's from india but like you know it's always been in our house and yeah i think you know just staring at it almost like every day when we were in lockdown and that sort of thing like you know we just, i just looked at it one day and i was just like huh there's like actually kind of really yeah, there's something metaphorical about this, like just looking at like the colors and how there's like all these shimmering, shimmery like sequins on it. And then we juxtapose against these, like darker background colors. And I was like, oh, that actually like really ties in well with like what's going on in my life at the moment. And, um, but I wanted to like make the picture, make it a little bit more like of a striking image. So, you know, I've had a lot of questions about the artwork because some people thought it was like a painting and some people thought it was like a digitally, digitally um, made image. But I've been like, no, it's actually a photo. <laughs> like, we just took this scarf that um, we had at home and uh, like we made a makeshift photo studio. So we like mounted it on this um, black uh, curtain. And my partner's an absolutely brilliant photographer. Um, so and then we've got like um, her brother involved as well, who's really good at like, you know, he streams and stuff. So he knows how to like, make his like studio at home like, look really nice. And he had all these lights. So we had these like red and purple lights that we were like moving around in this like makeshift studio. <laughs> and um, yeah, like found this really nice colors of like, you know, this red with this blue. And then we took some photos of it and then um, sat down with my partner and then we edited it, edited it together to make the image of what it is. And again, it was like just a super, crazy ambitious idea i had and i was just like i don't know how this is going to come out but it's worth like experimenting and giving it a try and it just it came out like exactly how i imagined it um and yeah it's just a representation of the people though and uh like i just couldn't be happier with like, how it looks and like i think to me obviously i'm gonna be biased but if i look at the artwork i'm like that's what the ep sounds like in my head <laughs> So um, I don't know if other people think that, but um, I've had good feedback about the artwork, so it's cool. And I actually put a, a little Instagram video up, like a little reel about like how we, a little, you know, how we made the artwork. So like just because I was taking photos while everyone else was doing all the hard work. <laughs> and I was just that because I, I have no photography skills, really. So I was just standing at the back to sort of like... I'll let everyone else get on with this. And uh... No, but I'm really glad that it came out exactly as you desired and the same with the ep as well um obviously you've touched upon that it's had a positive reception um have you like do you want to go into that a bit more detail like what is the general consensus been behind it has anyone said anything interesting to you about it that you were like oh i never thought about it in that way sort of thing or has it been generally like people are getting what you wanted to put across 
I think it's that people have been generally getting what I wanted to put across, yeah, okay. which um, you're never sure about that until you actually like put it out. <laughs> and like, I was terrified of that um, <laughs> initially. But what one thing people have been saying, which has been quite interesting, is that everyone has had like a different favorite song off of it. Um, and I always thought that, oh, like maybe everyone would like, you know, the first track, which is called Remember. I thought pretty much everyone would like that because it's like the most like singly of them all, even though I didn't really put out a single. I just put the whole thing out in one go. Um, but I've had people just being like, oh, I actually really like the last track the most. Or a few people have said they really like the Amber one the most. And a few people have said they really like, you know, the second track practice the most and um so that's actually taken me by surprise because i just i just thought people would just like the first one um and um and that sort of thing uh and i've also had people say that they really liked how it actually does really you know shift and move through all the movements in one go really seamlessly um so yeah i'm just really happy with that yeah no, i'm really glad that you've had that positive feedback personally i think my favorite track was practice so i was adding oh to cool the tally of <laughs> how he's like it what nice one <laughs> <laughs> so obviously you have just dropped this last week um mm. so i wouldn't expect you to necessarily know what's coming next but do you have an idea in terms of what direction you want you want to go in in the future in terms of future projects that sort of thing or are you solely focused on this for now because i finished up this EP pretty much like well I finished writing it like towards the end of 2021 I'd say so basically once I'd finished writing all these tracks and I was like yeah I'm happy with them I started making new stuff so I'm already sitting on like a bunch of new tracks but these new ones I've got I definitely more on the club side of things they're not they're not as like I suppose introspective um so yeah I've, I'm just I'm just basically not really sure what to do with them <laughs> yeah, at the moment um i kind of like hoard music and then when i feel ready to put it out i think i'll just put it out whenever i feel ready i think one thing i would like to do more of is like you know the way that i presented like practice makes miracles i want to keep that trajectory up with like my future releases um because i don't know to me like put music out is like a really special thing and i want everything i put out to be like really meaningful and like really like resonate with people and and it not just be like oh hey guys I just put out this track but I want it to be like no like this is like I think this is worth putting out into the world and like I don't want to put out anything like there's there's so much stuff out there and I just want to make sure that the stuff that I put out actually is like yeah like has a reason to exist out in there so mm -hmm. you know some of these tracks that I've made I'm not sure if I'll put all of them out but yeah, I just have loose plans right now. Not, nothing really that that concrete. Um, although I did have a bit of a like a I call them like inspiration strikes. I had a bit of an inspiration strike on Monday, where I was kind of like, oh, like I need to like knuckle down and actually make something that's very explorative. Is that a word explorative? <laughs> like we'll make that's very like yeah, we'll make it words. Um, you know, I kind of had that feeling again. Um, which is the feeling I had when I started working on Practice Makes Miracles. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Basically, that's the short answer. Yeah. <laughs> no, what, I think what? Yeah. I do think that's a really good place to be in, though, because I think it's much better to be in a place where you've got the music there. Maybe you put it out, maybe you don't, but you're not mm. pressuring, rising yourself. I mean, literally, the fact that you've had this mixed since the end of 2021 and are putting it out now mm. in March 2023. Um, yeah. I think mean, that's such a good position to be in as opposed to feeling a desperate need to oh I need to keep making music I need to be putting out something every so often like because I think yeah then obviously the, the quality is inevitably going to diminish if you're just constantly pressurizing oh I need to put something out you know what I mean yeah 100 percent. and like you know I, I feel like now like especially now like I really feel that like there's there's always this constant urge and like you've got to put something out you've got to put something out like you've always got to be doing something and like i don't really think it's very healthy then i don't really have any intention to want to play into that at all because what matters to me most is like the quality of what i put out rather than the quantity of what i put out um which is why i'm really like i'm really jealous of people like nikki Nair and like you know dj dj adhd and stuff because like they're constantly putting out music and it all bangs and i'm like how do you how are you doing this like you've got like you're 
your work rate is insane and you're just constantly putting out all of these epic bangers and I'm like how are you doing it but yeah um I just don't think my brain works that way so I'm happy to just uh yeah just like take my time with things and like keep it trundling along yeah so for people that do want to keep up with your music um, and yeah. keep up with future projects your DJing drumming etc and um, where's the mm. best place for them to find you uh yeah Instagram so my handle is at AJDZAR. Um, that's pretty much the same across all my socials. So like SoundCloud, Twitter, Facebook. No, I don't use Facebook much. Um, uh, even Bandcamp as well. Like um, it's all it's all there. So like that's the best place to like keep up with what I'm doing. I also do have like a, an email like list as well, which I'm finding has been like very helpful because sometimes, but like the Instagram's algorithm doesn't pick up on like what you put, what you post, and I don't really have that much interest sometimes of like having to post like selfies of myself all the time just so that people can see what I'm doing. Um, maybe a little bit to my detriment because, you know, like the way that I presented the EP out on my socials, I was using all those like handwritten notes and like, I don't think it caught into the algorithm very well. So um, yeah, but then I was also like, like there's a little bit of me giving them a little finger up to Instagram, <laughs> a little bit as well, you know? Um, but um, which I'm sure everyone can uh, sympathize with. Yeah, but, for um, sure. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, AJDZAR 